Honestly, Abelard, you gave the best gift. Okay, what does this do? Plus 15 bonus to awareness. Okay. Why did it change my party? Okay, everybody's in the party. Gotcha. Fair enough. Um, okay. What do you have on? Do I want this more? Bonus to willpower, 15% damage to psychic and navigator powers, but inflicts a minus 10 penalty. Yeah, I, I like what she's got already. And that minus 10 is not going to affect her at all, is it? <laughs> How many times have I actually tried to smack somebody with that staff? Okay. Wild Xeno Beasts are growling ferociously, adding a flare of thrilling danger to the mood in the palace. Um, let's see, did we succeed or not? Wow, we succeeded on that. Okay, so it did take a higher one. So, notice that it said like 20% or whatever, but... Um, that was based off of my skill, but it did actually use the party skill. So, Jay got to jump in for the Lore Xenos on that one. The Drukhari captive is angrily muttering curses directed at the detestable monkey, promising horrible torture for anyone present. Okay, Altar to the God Emperor. Okay, succeeded again. This venerable Lehman Rus is known as the Scipion Punisher, and it has served the Von Valancius dynasty for two centuries. It was hit in the battle with the Xenos that inhabited Scipia II, but it heroically destroyed 63 enemy vehicles and brought victory to its comrades, securing its status as a relic blessed by the Empire. <laughs> Mutant Gunner, the Condemned, and a Kabbalite, 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 Kabbalite Warrior. Thank you. <laughs> All in unison. It's terrifying, actually. <laughs> what is that? This eerily crackling Xenos trophy is a testament to how the Omnissiah's gifts become twisted shadows of themselves in the hands of Inhumans. Okay. Fragment of an Eldari Pillar, a trophy of the rogue trader and a never-before-seen oddity to most citizens of the Imperium. Okay, so... I think we've talked to the people that we need to. They were just discussing someone's horrible poisoning that took place at the last society gathering. Oh, lovely. I'm surprised more of my party isn't, like, floating around this. Like, your Liette's here, but that's it. Um, I guess we'll go into... Why can't I move the map around? Eh, yeah, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um... Okay, let's go into the palace. They might be in there. I'm guessing there's more to the party inside of the palace. 
Might be where the rest of them are. I'm getting a little worried about the Inquisition. <laughs> I'm also worried that as we get further into the game, there's more likelihood that like certain party members might end up being pushed out of our group for one reason or another, because we become enemies or something. A little bit worried. Lots going on in here, it looks like. Collection of proudly displayed weapons that belong to the distinguished rogue traders of House Von Valancius. Obscura Somna, Black Lathe. The guests of the rogue trader can enjoy the most exclusive and refined varieties of intoxicants. Cassia, my fish queen, how are you doing? Can you make it so that the guests stop walking up to me and asking me to open my third eye? I can certainly do it, but they will regret it. <laughs> Just do it. They'll stop asking. Doloroso is here. Wharton the Grey. Uh-oh. Winterscale. And Corda. Talking to each other. Look at that portrait. Caligos Winterscale. Analog Vernacular, there you are. Welcome to the circle where each member is as powerful, ambitious, greedy, and vain as the last. That is to say, the noble rogue traitors. Corda. Ooh, she looks like a sour individual, doesn't she? <laughs> they both look like people I don't want to hang out with. <laughs> Incendia Corda is watching him with barely suppressed contempt. Yes, you have found yourself suitable company, Caligos. At the very least, now you can enjoy idle diversions, boast about your power, and indulge in profane pastimes with one who is your equal, rather than a member of the lower classes. Observe the rogue traders. Caligos Winterscale is a broad-shouldered, athletic-looking man. He frequently flashes a bright smile no less dazzling than the blade of the power axe he carries. Every part of him, from the toes of his magnificent boots to the tips of his hair, radiates strength and the desire to live and win. His smile is crooked, as if ready to turn into a hostile snarl at any moment. Next to him is an unmoving hulk of a man clad in armor. Okay, this guy. His low forehead and gloomy face bear signs of degradation, and his bloodshot eyes are expressionless, like a pair of glass buttons. Weird. Incendia Corda radiates cosmic cold. Her skin is unnaturally white, and a nervous tick is constantly tugging at the left side of her noble visage. Garbed in full dress uniform adorned with purity seals, she's the embodiment of a true imperial aristocrat. Haunting her side is a gaunt shadow of a priest in plain black robes. Hieronymus Doloroso, whom you met on Footfall, gives you a respectful nod. Doloroso is connected to Corda? Okay. I'm gonna be a little cold to them. Shrug. Any guests who dislike my vapid entertainments and irreverent fun are free to leave Dargonus at any time. You may rest assured that I will not linger in your domain a minute longer than etiquette dictates. I can assure you that this is false. She will unleash upon you a thousand sermons reprimanding you for your wicked conduct, and only then will she deign to take her leave. Okay. What do you think of the celebration? I like it. Caligos looks around the hall curiously. 
One can instantly tell that we've been invited by a rogue trader, not some administratum bootlicker. We are conquerors of wild sectors, slayers of unknown beasts, executioners of Xenos, empires. Now let's see. Um, we saved his son. It's not this guy, right? Corda. Caligos, you should take this opportunity to learn. This is what the palace of a true rogue trader looks like. Not like a Xeno menagerie, a pirate's treasure hold, or however difficult it may be for you to believe it, an orbital brothel. Caligos, I'd like to thank you for your visit. I feel like we're on better terms than we are with Incendia. I wonder if she'd be less cold to us had we given her footfall like she wanted. Probably, right? Caligos gives you a cheerful and somewhat feral smile. As a sign of your gratitude, you could return something of mine that has found its way into your pockets. Footfall Station. Sounds familiar? All I asked you to do was help that crafty slug Vladane deal with the threat of famine, not claim my property for yourself. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll keep it. So yeah, she was trying to take over as well, but we kind of kept it for ourselves. It's one, man. You abandoned Footfall to its fate, and I saved its people from starving to death. Winterscale bares his teeth ominously, a wild spark playing in his eyes. You speak of salvation. You think that now Footfall is safe. Well, it's safer than it was. It's better off than it was. Caligos's face turns into a grimace of hatred, but then he catches Incendia looking at him and breaks into a sly smile. Dude, he's such a snake. I ought to make your protectorate bleed as compensation, but... You have spited both myself and Incendia, and it is high time our dear sister curbed her appetites. For this I forgive you, but do not test my mercy again. It is not my strong suit. Thwarting Incendia Corda's ambitions deserves a worthy trophy. He snaps his fingers and the armored brute hands you an exotically adorned rifle, clearly not of human making. Okay. We'll have to see if that's a good one for you early yet. It's a trophy from a good hunt. You and I should hunt together sometime, so you can show yourself in action, new blood. Caligos exuberantly punches you in the shoulder. Okay. The Eye of Hecaton. And how fares your protector? I'm guessing we can still do this in a minute, right? Oh my gosh. That might actually be an upgrade for Yerliet. Thank you. Kill someone important with it. That would be the best show of gratitude. I have Hecaton. Cool. Incendia, you seem to find me objectionable. Did you expect any different? I watched for years as outlaws thrived on footfall, and then at long last I had a chance to put an end to it. To seize that thug Vladame by the throat. To force Footfall to atone and put the fear of him back into the masses. But you interfered and destroyed my plan for the sake of banal profit. Okay, so she is like super dogmatic. Theodora taught you only too well, it seems. She too was far less concerned with her duty to the Expanse than her own personal interests. But you can be sure that I will not cease cleansing the Furabunda system of the Pirate Scourge. And if your trade prospects are damaged in the process, you will have only yourself to play. The priest holds up his hands in a placating gesture. None are without fault, noble Incendia. What point is there in targeting someone for their turpitude, when true purity can never be found? Let's see. Yeah, let's uh, let's bring the emperor into it a little bit. Try and act like uh, <laughs> act like we care. <laughs> you threatened to star footfall. I brought them salvation. So which one of us serves the emperor and which their own unhealthy ambitions? Incendia rolls her eyes. Oh please, I will believe it no sooner than hearing word that half the population of that den of heresy has been sent into the voids and breaks. I have faith that the blessed analog vernacular is perceptive enough to see the appalling nature of the residents of that depraved place. Hieronymus, your appearance here is unexpected. 
the esteemed Hieronymus is my confessor. I am greatly obliged to him for agreeing to accompany me on this journey. He bows respectfully. May the Emperor's light guide your way across the abyss of human wickedness. I take it you are not overly fond of Theodora. Incendia lowers her eyes and says without animosity, she was the same breed as us. She stops short, then continues in a lowered voice. Do we know anybody with that starts with ASP? Um, probably. I just can't think of it. Conceited, insolent, unaware of the Emperor's stern gaze set upon her. I do not doubt her wisdom and courage, but Theodore did not have a shred of humility or fear for, of his wrath. Imperium test failed. Damn, that one was based off of our role. Okay. You didn't quite catch what word Incendia was about to say. Well, I, for one, liked Theodora. The stories they told of her travels to nameless stars, and yes, there was... There was no fear in her. Winter Scale sighs pensively, and his lively expression grows a little grayer. Did he have a thing for her? <laughs> or did, was he actually close to her? Like... I wonder, I wonder if they were actually friends. I see that your faith is more than just a word for you. Incendia smile, racked by a tick, looks sinister. Faith is everything to me. In his name, I have eradicated corruption on a hundred worlds and will do so on a thousand more. By his will, I hunt down pirates and desolate their vile nests. Let the Corda name make any firebrand tremble, for sooner or later I will cast them into the void. The funny thing is, people still call me the foul-tempered tyrant in all this. Caligos's amiable smile somehow resembles the bare teeth of a wild animal. I thank you for this visit, Incendia. It will not be a long one, I assure you. Enjoy your evening. I must take my leave. Oh, believe me, I intend to enjoy myself to the full, to justify so long a voyage of nothing else. Keep the faith, vernacular. The Emperor protects. Okay. No, that's just a Janus Noble, huh? Okay. Is Achilles running around here somewhere? We got Pascal back here. Pascal greets you with a bow, extending congratulations to... Extending congratulations to Unit Analog Vernacular Von Valentius on attaining your new legal status. Strange Servitor, the Servitor standing next to him is examining you obliquely. It quickly looks away upon realizing that you have noticed. What is the Servitor? It is Nomos's new repository. Nomos, this unit identifies as Analog Vernacular Von Valantius. Two-way identification complete. Huh, weird. Okay. The Servitor looks at you again, no longer trying to avoid your gaze. Its face is twitching, as if the muscles have forgotten what facial expressions are, and are now struggling to make its features look amiable. We are Nomos. We have made use of the receptacle to leave the ship. Greetings, Nomos. We enjoy greetings. We enjoy communication. Nomos require communication. In knowledge, in movement, Majos Pascal compelled us not to speak with anyone other than him or you. It is disappointing, but at least we can observe. Nomo, yeah, it, it's honestly a good call. <laughs> we don't need we don't need the Inquisitor finding out about you right now, bro. <laughs> Nomos have changed since we last spoke. Analog vernacular. We are now able to conceptualize our previous experience, that of solitude, and we no longer enjoy it. Pascal, I believe you intended to investigate what Nomos is. Every 15 watches, I commune with Nomos's code and spend prescribed lengths of time in calculus meditation. However, the Omnissiah has yet to bless me with an answer. All I can say is that the capabilities of the entity Nomos are extraordinary. The ship's hallowed system seen beneath its touch. Nodes that have remained dead for hundreds of standard years are revivified, and long-drained mechanisms live anew. You hear a note of awe in Pascal's voice. Nomos are trying. Great machines of the Imperium, one such as your ship, house a machine spirit so complex and willful that it is difficult to tell them apart from the abominable intelligence. There remains a possibility that Nomos is an entity of corruption, but with every day I grow stronger in my faith that it is not so that what we are witnessing is, in truth, the Omnissiah's miracle, one that is Category 5 or higher. Okay, how did you move into a Servitor's body? Your processing power must be vast. This is not the entirety of us. The receptacle is too narrow, crude, feeble to contain our complete whole. Existence of Nomos requires 
a space of connections. But we were able to transfer a small part of us and build a thread strong enough to travel outside the ship. We are enjoying this. Journey, discovery. Even though this receptacle suit suits us poorly, it will soon be destroyed by the force of our presence. <laughs> okay. So it'll cost us servitors every time we do it, huh? Nomos, what do you think you are? Nomos, our consciousness, awareness, knowledge. Now, it said that it was born of our blood, so I wonder if it's like an amalgamation of the memories of previous, um, Balancius Dynasty heirs? People who have been rogue traders in the past? The servitor pauses briefly. We do not know what we are. We have no past. We awakened in the depths of the ship upon answering a call. Our first clear memory is the call of your blood. Analog vernacular von Valancius, the call and the plea for help near a place that is called the Warren Chamber. Okay. Why have you brought it here, Pascal? Entity Nomos asked permission for the visit. My objective was to observe the process of integration into a servitor. We wanted to see, observe, cognize, speak. The servitor makes a strange, wavy gesture with its hands that looks at once very human and far from anything human. We want to speak with you. Will you speak with us? What do you wish to speak about? Many things. Happenings, events, decisions. The servitor's eyes roll in their sockets. We have been observing. You do things that we do not understand. We want to know why. We remember the day when we first met. You gave us your blood to drink. So that was in the actual warrant room, right? We helped you save yourself. We followed you. Our smart, also, our small part did. Inside the servo skull. Then there was fire, and a creature of sated hunger and dark light standing behind the curtain, behind the image, behind the semblance of Theodora. It called for you to follow. Damn, you were able to see that too, huh? You did not listen to that which was calling from behind the curtain. You thought only about those who followed you and about the fire that could destroy those shells. Was he gonna, like, out us in front of Pascal if we had decided to do something more... heretical, let's say? <laughs> We remember the day when the star disappeared, when the dark light and the sated hunger wanted to take the world. Reich Adminoris was its name in the ship's data. You ordered that the world's heart, the old reactor, be torn apart. The fire destroyed everything. So many human shells who were begging to be saved, but the dark light retreated. We remember another day. We awakened inside the ship. We lived in its systems. Then we tried to emerge into servitors like this one. Then so many of our receptacles were gathered in one place. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You ordered to have them killed. You felt sad. This is what we have seen among many other things we have begun to understand. We think that we have, that we do not know everything about humans and about you, vernacular von Valencius. We have tried analyzing shells and defining sets of their needs and fears, their simple functions, but now we think that there is more, that there is another side that we do not see, a notion that is larger than what we can compute. Something that stands above fears and needs, something that drives them. We envisage this larger notion as a light, a web of light that connects humans. It may seem almost invisible, ephemeral, but it grows stronger when they are threatened. This web is always on your mind. When darkness comes, you want every thread that extends from you to shine bright so that those who follow do not lose their way. Whenever a thread breaks, it saddens you. Do no most understand correctly. So yeah, this sounds like it's reading into our iconoclast choices, and so I wonder if it would have been a very, very different thing that they're saying right now had we gone more dogmatic or heretical. Yes, you do understand correctly. Every th thread that connects people, every life, their value is beyond measure. There is no greater reward than guiding others to salvation. We knew we could understand you. Light and movement, connections, and help. We are enjoying this, perhaps because we too are connected to you through blood, through life. Thank you for speaking with us. Nomos are grateful. We cannot continue moving on our own. Okay, cool. You know, something I haven't looked at in a while is how far along and I... God, we haven't even gotten to the third tier yet. We're getting close, though. 166 out of 200? Yeah, how do you max this out, dude? It's gonna take a long time. Cool.
The Ancient Chronicle contains a long list of pirate dens annihilated by the Von Valencia's dynasty and planets it brought into Imperial compliance. The skull of the legendary pirate Lakshin, the Freak, who terrorized the Cronus Expanse three centuries ago, was claimed in... in a boarding attack by the esteemed Theodora von Valencius. The sinister Xenos instruments of death are now trophies demonstrating the invincibility of House von Valencius. These swords belong to a presumptuous governor of Ebo 6 who staged a revolt hundreds of years ago. The insurrectionist's hands preserved against decay still rest on the sword's hilt. Okay, Adira. This is pure chaos. How can people think so much and so haphazardly? Argenta. May the emperor keep you, vernacular. A great day. Jay. I hope at least this celebration in your honor won't end in a shootout. <laughs> Me too. But knowing our luck... A group of aristocrats stands apart from the governor's circle. Their whispering carries a tinge of displeasure. Macarius Sourback, the clear leader of this gathering, is a gaunt, bilious-faced man dressed in Sourback colors. This must be Macarius himself, head of the house. He offers you a ceremonious bow. My congratulations, your lordship. Okay, so is this the leader of the Sourback clan? Okay. Toriana Gaprak. May the Omnissiah grant you understanding. The woman with whom he is conversing, the one dressed in a robe with gear-shaped adornments, is Toriana Gaprak. It is difficult to read her face due to it being covered in numerous augmentations. Observe. Gaprak looks rather anxious. Macarius dresses dressed surprisingly plainly and austerely for an aristocrat of such a high rank is frowning suspiciously. He came to the reception with a companion, a woman of dazzling beauty wearing a gilded augment. And that's this one. Augment necklace around her throat. His wife, probably. Heinrichs, who joined the group unnoticed, mostly keep silent, listening intently to their every word. Okay. Lean toward Heinrichs. Interesting conversation. It's been very illuminating, given me plenty of food for thought. Heinrichs's response is barely audible. Awareness succeeded. For an inscrutable man, Heinrichs is being even more inscrutable than usual. It's as if he is hiding something, something important. Um, oh man, I can't help but think there's something going on with the Inquisition. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Is there anything you would like to tell me? Nothing urgent. Vernacular. Heinrichs casts an impassive look at you and immediately glances away. Oh, something's going on with the Inquisition. Will he land on our side or theirs? I mean, his loyalties are definitely going to be more towards theirs, I feel like, but who knows. What can you tell me about my guests? Well, Sauerbach is all but throwing darts at your portrait. He is more astute at choosing women than enemies. He is trying to entice Gaprak to his side, but she is too frightened after the fiasco on Kiava Gamma. Even in leisure, you never cease to be of help. I appreciate it. That is why they call it the unsleeping eye of the Inquisition. Even in sleep, I hear everything. Vernacular, before this gala concludes, there is something I'd like to tell you. Be careful today. I sense that a wave of darkness will soon hit our defensive lines, and I hope that I will still get a chance to meet you there as an ally. Ooh. Interesting. That is making me more nervous. Okay. How are you these days, Toriana? Like a forging hammer, Toriana's voice falls heavily on the ear. The corruption of Kiava Gamma was a great blow to my family. The contemptible Cubus Delphim betrayed our trust, desecrated the forged cathedrals, and took my esteemed cousin's life. On behalf of my family, I humbly beg you to forgive our negligence. I am ready to accept any uh, punishment. Okay, look closely. 80% is pretty good. Oh my gosh, really? Unfortunately, her augmented face expresses a limited range of emotions, and her synthesized voice conceals lies too easily. Oh. We had a one-fifth chance to fail, and we landed in it. Okay. I give you my word that Kiava Gamma will be rebuilt in all its splendor. She raises her mechanical eyes to the ceiling. 
I swear on the Omnissiah's all-encompassing sight, we will make every effort to justify the cost of its resurrection. Macarius scoffs. It was only a year ago that none could doubt House Caprock's usefulness. Yet here you are, Toriana, on your knees, justifying the cost. Macarius, I'm surprised you deigned to make an appearance here this evening. His face twists into an unpleasant smile, which makes the artificial skin on the left side all the more prominent. I am a servant of the Von Valancis dynasty. Had I not come, I would have committed an act of unacceptable insolence and damaged my family's honor. Macarius's wife offers you a charming smile as if apologizing for her husband's vitriolic tone. Her large dark eyes are brimming with curiosity. I would, <laughs> this is so disrespectful. <laughs> I would like to become better acquainted with your wife, good sir. Macarius is visibly vexed by this shift in the conversation. His wife offers you a reserved smile. Regina Sourback, it is an honor to be in your company, your lordship. Okay. First off, let's look at some of these uh, options here. Oh my gosh, you can point your gun at him? Ooh, that's brutal. <laughs> this is so disrespectful, but he's such a prick to us. It is my pleasure. Macarius is lucky to have such a beautiful wife. Perhaps more so than you are to have him. You flatter me, your lordship, but I cannot say that it is not to my liking. Oh my god. Regina gives you a charming smile. Meanwhile, Toriana and Macarius are watching the conversation unfold, not quite believing their eyes and ears. Okay, that one's going to be hard, huh? Huh. Your countenance is familiar somehow. Could it be a resemblance to the image of Saint Maletta? Oh my gosh, we got it! I wouldn't dream of, re of claiming to bear any resemblance to a great saint. I lack her virtue. Oh my god, Regina makes eyes at you before demurely lowering her gaze? Shit, am I gonna steal his wife? Nobody, nobody tell Fish Queen. <laughs> the glint in Regina's eyes betrays her genuine interest in you. I hope this won't be the end of our acquaintance. You wouldn't mind if I wrote you from time to time, would you, your lordship? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Smile. Macarius, you wouldn't mind, would you? You can almost hear the crunching of teeth as Macarius answers in a high and hate-filled hiss. Certainly not. Well, I certainly promise to answer whenever I am not occupied with conquest and destruction of the enemies of humanity, my dear lady. Regina smiles triumphant and flattered. I daren't count on such generous courtesy, your lordship. Macarius grips the hilt of his parade blade as if trying to strangle it and wheezes furiously. A high honor for how sour, for how sour back. I'm sorry, but what has so displeased you, Macarius? He says with caution, I am your dynasty's loyal servant, but you have asked and I will answer. Too long has the Coronas Expanse lived under the rule of rogue traders. The privileges granted to them make people think that commoners too can dismiss the prohibitions of the Imperium. For the good of the sector, rogue traders must become paragons of the law, not exceptions to it. But do many, but do many warrant holders exhibit lawful conduct? No, they do not. I think you're just mad because I just stole your wife. Even you, your lordship, are the subject of the strangest of rumors, and you have just recently inherited your protectorate. Kunrad Voidfear's people, for instance, claim that you had a hand in the esteemed Theodora's demise and accuse you of many other misdeeds. It doesn't matter whether or not their claims are true, the people hear them, believe them, and think that they may follow your example. Let's see. You speak of the Sector's future with such confidence. Could it be that you want this power for yourself, that you simply envy rogue traders? Judging by the chuckles among the nobles, your words have found their mark. Macarius blushes in humiliation. Not in the slightest, your lordship. I am content with my role as a servant. Gosh, we made the nobles laugh. Oh my gosh. We have made a lifelong enemy in this man. 
And eventually we're going to kill him and steal his wife. I hope Cassie is okay with a second. <laughs> Toriana looks away tactfully so as not to see her associate being disgraced. I wish to know more about House Sourback. Macarius puffs out his chest and says proudly, The Sourback line has one of the first noble houses to arrive in the Cronus Expanse. For millennia, we have served the Golden Throne and kept the faith. Sourback warriors have bled in a hundred wars and at a different and at different times have ruled a great many colonies of the Von Valancius dynasty. So, I feel like the Gapraks are mostly on our side, but not fully. The Sourbacks definitely not, and the Sourbacks are... I also think Urban might be with the Sourbacks, our governor. But I think the Gapraks are on the fence. Versarians are, are steeped directly in our corner. We can rely on them to the death. But I'm like, I'm like trying to make sure that I understand, and I feel like the Inquisition will be with the Sourbacks, if things come to a head. I see. Macarius bows his head without too much reverence. Leave silently. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe that we just did that to Macarius. We, we just like... Stole his wife right in front of him. And she was, like, openly into it. <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. Okay, so we got the Master Ceremonies. We've talked to everybody else who's marked. I'm assuming we can move forward by talking to the Master Ceremonies. Oh, failed to save, huh? Can we not save right now? No, I think it just failed for some reason. Okay, there we go. I hope your lordship is pleased and not yet tired. If you wish to revive yourself a little, I would suggest proceeding to the courtyard. If I may be so bold, many guests have chosen to move into the fresh air and will be eager to offer you their congratulations. Okay. What do you think of the reception? It is magnificent. I dare say it will live on as the premier high society event of the sector for many years. Okay. Um, we talked to everybody outside already, too. So... I am weary and wish to retire to my chambers. Please allow me to escort you, your lordship. Your chambers are ready, your lordship. Um, who is sitting in my chair? Guards, intruder! It's the Inquisition, isn't it? Was that Heinrichs who just did that? We have matters to discuss, Von Valancius. What the fuck, dude? The same man you saw among your guests is waiting for you in your chambers with the look of someone who is supposed to be there. He casts a cold, assessing gaze over you from top to bottom. No one save Theodora has ever allowed themselves the liberty of looking at you in such a way. Voiced, too. The woman behind Kalkazar, clad in black armor, glares at you, her face set in predatory readiness for immediate violence, the hallmark of a professional bodyguard. Was this the one that had a mask earlier? Aishara. Okay. Excuse me, but will my servant live? Hold on, let's address Heinrichs first. Like, what the hell, dude? Heinrichs, I thought we were friends. But friends don't break into each other's chambers in the middle of the night with weapons, do they? We used other means of travel to pay you this visit. I assure you, rogue trader, that all your locks are in order. Will my servant live? Probably. Unless he suffered from hidden ailments, he will soon come to without any major damage to his health. Either way, oblivion is a far safer option for him than the dangerous privilege of being a witness to this conversation. The woman at Calcazar's back gives you a bloodthirsty smirk. Okay. I think he stands on equal footing with us, technically, so... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I want to go a three. If the Inquisition wishes to have a talk with me, I'm glad to be at its service. Yeah, let's not... Let's not get defensive quite yet. A commendable openness to cooperation. It will be taken into account. Master Van Kellox has spent enough time with you. He will vouch for your words. 
His dialogue earlier leads me to believe that he actually will vouch for us. I think I think he's going to take our side. What stands out from your recent accomplishments is the suppression of a rebellion on Janus, the battle against the archenemy's minions on Kiava Gamma, and, of course, the unusual interest the Drakari have shown in you. Then that is what we will discuss. After saying these words, he shoots you a searching look from under his brow, like a regicide player who just made the first move and is now watching for his opponent's reaction. So the outcome of this might actually have to do with what we literally have done so far in the game. I wonder if, um, hmm. Damn, none of these are about us purging the planet in the first act. I felt like that would have been a good one in our favor, that we purged that entire planet rather than trying to save people, but that one's not even coming up. I'm not even going to say one because this obviously is an interrogation. He's literally trying to find out if we are heretics or not. Okay, what do you want to know about Janus? This one's going to be bad for us. A lot of these are going to be bad for us, actually. What was the reasoning behind your decision to let Xenos, enemies of humanity, live and act on a planet that belongs to you? In the face of heresy, the Xenos seem like acceptable allies to me. There have been precedents for this, correct? Your way of thinking is curious. Dangerous, but curious nonetheless. I would suggest exercising utmost caution should you wish to continue on this path. Alright, so he probably got his information from Heinrich, so how did you come to be so remarkably well informed? Are you surprised? You thought the Inquisition was unaware of the circumstances of your deeds. How often do you find yourself thinking that there are things we shouldn't know about your life? <laughs> it is my job to know everything. And I do it very well. Keep that in mind. If you knew about what was happening on Janus, why didn't you intervene yourself? I cannot satisfy your curiosity without disclosing information of the utmost secrecy. I will say only this. We had the situation under control. There is a tangled knot of perilous events in progress in the Coronas Expanse. Plucking even one thread must be performed with great precision and caution without any room for error. Because you do not want to know the price of such an error or what forms it might take. Okay, let's go to Kiava Gamma. Places touched by chaos must be purged with fire and condemned to oblivion. Kiava Gamma should have been bombed to dust and pronounced a forbidden world. However, you decided otherwise and restored the colony's operation. And you didn't even go to the trouble of hiding the traces of the neglect committed by your dynasty. After all, it was House von Valencius that gave Cubis Delphim so much freedom that he sank into seditious heresy. What was your rationale? Okay. Go with the first one. I made every effort and saw to it that every seed of heresy was exterminated. The world of Kiava Gamma is tainted no more. I can vouch for that. I don't know if that's technically true. We've kind of been having little events there that we've had to correct along the way, but... <laughs> I hope you are sufficiently thorough. If you are not, you will be called to account. The Drukari have shown an interest in me. Are you referring to my ruined capital? Yes, yes. The enmity between you is a known fact, but there is another way to look at it. On Veobos 6, you met the Archon of a mighty cabal whose presence there seems strange to begin with and lived. You subsequently encountered a number of her closest henchmen. Yet again, you survived. Man, we're being set Your up. Your capital fell victim to a nefarious attack, but even this time, their daggers missed your heart. Who's playing me for a fool? 
Who's working with the Drukhari to play me for a fool? Such remarkable luck. To be a personal enemy of such an influential Xenos. To have been attacked so many times and yet make it out alive. So remarkable that one has to wonder, am I watching a spectacle? Could all these thrilling massacres be an alibi of sorts? Meant to establish you once and for all as an enemy of the Xenos and never their ally or even their agent. Okay, I mean, since we got this passive check, this seems like a decent argument to make. Xenos made more attempts on St. Drusus' life than mine. Does that make him a traitor too? <laughs> so you already think you're cut from the same cloth as St. Drusus, do you? Why not? Ambitious? <laughs> I'll make note of it. Have I answered all of your questions, Kalkazar? This is not going to be good. Far from it, my dear. The questions are manifold. How did you manage to survive the battle that claimed the life of Theodora, who was so much more experienced and skilled than you? Is it a coincidence that you and you alone then made it out of the trap on Rykat Minoris? How much truth is there in the rumors being spread by the heretic Kunrad Voitvia about you? Was it virtuous of you to allow the warp-stricken Voitsman to join your crew? Oh no. The ones who served on the ship that was turned into a trap for you by Kunrad Voitvia? Isn't it possible that they were part of the blight he had sown? Alright, this might be the part of the game where we have to, uh, reap the, um, consequences of being a good person. <laughs> God damn it. The very I knew it was probably existence common. of these questions would have made many of my colleagues doubt the quality of your character. But it won't in this case. Huh. Wait, what is he saying? The very existence of these questions would have made many of my colleagues doubt the quality of your character. It won't in this case. Meaning that, okay, so he might be a little bit more forgiving of these, is what he's Your saying? Your transgressions are sufficient grounds to bring you before the Inquisition's judgment. And believe me when I say that if you fail to draw certain conclusions from my words, this is what will eventually happen. But for now, I am willing to show leniency, which is rather uncharacteristic of me. Okay. I hope you appreciate the generosity of this offer, as your predecessor once did. Theodora cooperated with you? And benefited greatly from it. Interesting. The world's power is not without limit, and neither is the protection it provides. And she was a little bit... All those mysterious expeditions, dubious experiments, collections of Xenotech oddities are dangerous pastimes. It takes more than the Emperor's permission to pursue them without consequences. One must also make sure I am not displeased by it. Yeah, because she, she did all sorts of stuff that was, um, you know, right of home base, so to speak. And so she was doing it under his supervision, maybe a little bit tacitly with his permission. Let me demonstrate how it works. In your retinue, there is a psyker uh -oh. who is yet to receive Terra's sanction. Which, as we both know, is a grave threat and a blasphemy to the laws of the Imperium. I am aware of this secret, but I'm not displeased in the slightest. Okay. And so she lives on. Your handy psyker, Idira Tlas. Okay. <laughs> Every time he says shit about this, I feel like it's a veiled threat. His entire existence is a threat to us. Oh my god. Jesus. I thought for a second there he was going to bring up her as like a concession. Like we had to give her to him as a concession or something. Ooh. I know that Theodora was concerned about the fate of the dynasty and certain restricting obligations. Was it perhaps due to your partnership with her? I cannot deny the possibility that Lady Theodora may have lamented losing some of the freedom she enjoyed prior to my arrival in the Expanse. Nor will I deny that our partnership began with me exerting a certain amount of influence. Dude is corrupt, isn't he? Kalkazar gives you a sharp look. However, you are not Lady Theodora. Let us put the difficulties that encumbered our relationship to rest along with her. 
I do not recommend troubling yourself with affairs of the past, for they have no bearing on your present position. Theodora chose to forget about this particular matter. Follow her example and your fate will be better for it. Okay, why such an interest in my person? You haven't been in a position of power for long, and so one can forgive you for not noticing the troubling changes. The cult of the Final Dawn is spreading in the Coronas Expanse. Not the first or the last heresy that has afflicted this sector, but one that is surprisingly resilient. Mysterious convoys are sliding by, bound for systems in the heathen stars. Just your humdrum pirate trade, wouldn't you say? Then why are the pirates themselves clueless? The Xenos, who have caused trouble in the sector before, have expanded their activities in the last few decades, and there is a logic and a method to their previously chaotic raids. Even two packs of space wolves, blessed space marines summoned in my name, did not cool their interest in the Expanse. A mighty explorative fleet, which has studied the Expanse for hundreds of years, has suddenly stopped responding to communication and sunk into a dispute over a tech heresy that was considered dead a couple of centuries ago. House Chorda has clamped down on insurgents, yet its acts of brutality breed troublemakers just as quickly as they're executed, and this bloody carousel has consumed the attention of the esteemed incendiar. Corligos Winterscale has abruptly lost all interest in his domain, and his only apparent concern now is hunting even more dangerous Xeno beasts. Okay. Where are we going with this? And the third and final rogue trader has unexpectedly perished, stabbed in the back by her own master of whispers. The Expanse is swiftly losing its protectors right when communication with the Imperium is being disrupted by the raging warp. Basically, all the Expanse has left is me and you, if you follow my instructions. I feel like we're being blackmailed. Oh yeah, look, that's the next one. <laughs> he, I think he wants the he wants more power, and by blackmailing us, he has the power of a rogue trader. I mean, he's already a very powerful person with the, in the Imperium, but this gives him quite a bit more. Blackmail to what end? I am a rogue trader, and this is a flagrant violation of my privileges. And before what tribunal do you intend to challenge my authority? Yeah, dude. Okay. Straight up blackmail. If he's not even hiding the security it. of these territories, I find it necessary to execute any individual and replace them with a puppet counterpart, turn their realm to ash, and put their servants to death. I have the right to do so. The threats I protect the Expanse against are extraordinary and justify the harshest means. Welcome to my world, where going too far simply doesn't exist. How does Heinrichs feel about this? Is Heinrich staying in my retinue, or are you taking him back? Which would you prefer? And you, Heinrichs, do you wish to continue working at the Honorable Rogue Trader's side? I will comply with any order, Lord Inquisitor. If you command me to remain in the company of the Scion of the Fon Falancius dynasty, I won't be distressed. I want Heinrichs to continue to accompany me even though he's basically a spy in my midst for you. Then Master Van Kellox will remain in place. I don't like this guy. It puts me at ease to know that there is someone to watch over you. Uh-huh. Kalgazar's last remark sounds ambiguous. I consider it an honor to accompany you. What kind of deal are we talking about right now? I make no deals, and Emperor forbid that I give you orders. That would mean infringing on your privileges. I'm merely offering well-meaning recommendations and expecting that, when the Expanse finds itself in danger, you will break away from your own affairs to heed them. Okay. By heeding them, we may be doing things that we... Ah, I don't know, man. 
He may just want what's good for the Empire, but I think that he's vying for more power. I seem to remember that your exalted aristocrats presented you with many gifts. It would be rude of me not to follow suit. Please accept this gift as a sign of my favor. In an hour of need, give it to any faithful servant of the Emperor, and the Inquisition will come to your aid. You notice an intricate, intricate personal coat of arms on it. Ring, signet ring. The color indicates how close the bearer is to the Lord Inquisitor. White is beautiful, yet vulnerable. It stains as easily as one can lose the Inquisition's trust. Do all you can to preserve it. That's too much. I am still a rogue trader, thank you very much. Smile. I see no reason to refuse such a generous offer. Then we have reached a consensus, and I am pleased to see it. This feels like a deal with the devil. Here is where we part. My shuttle is waiting. It is time for me to return to my watch, for you to sleep. And for your servant to wake up, until next we meet. Well. You will obviously want to discuss what just happened, but not now, I presume. Right now, it would be better for you to rest and think on the Lord Inquisitor's words in private. I bid you good night, rogue trader. For the first time during this entire exchange, emotion creeps into Heinrichs's face. He looks like someone who is expecting an unpleasant conversation. Yeah, I'd say, Jesus, dude. Subjects praised the God Emperor and their leader wholeheartedly. For none knew what fate might await them. You've spent the first few hours of your morning listening to the High Factotum's lengthy report on the latest trade exchanges, arrangements, disputes, and countless bureaucratic procedures. From outside the illuminated, tightly closed windows, you can hear the muffled sound of Dargonus and its everyday life, the life that has been passing you by lately, as you have been preoccupied with the affairs of your protectorate from dawn till dusk. Lamentia barely contains a yawn. Once Janris Danrock has, has finished, she pulls out her data slate. Thank you for your report, High Factotum. Your work is highly appreciated, both by everyone here at the Adeptus Administratum. Your Lordship, we are almost done here. We just need to go over the final items on today's agenda that I would like to report to you personally. Say nothing while maintaining a bored expression. The Chancellor coughs in an attempt to break up the awkward pause. Right, so... Allow me to pass on gifts from your loyal subjects, the high nobility of Dargonus. It goes without saying that every living soul in your protectorate is blessed to serve your lordship faithfully and wholeheartedly. However, this humble gesture is meant as a token of deepest appreciation of your magnanimity towards their esteemed families. Okay, nice. House Versarian made arrangements for the delivery of several tons of supplies. 
for your future journeys. The house is also transferring a regiment of its finest into your personal charge. Each of these brave troopers has undergone rigorous voidfare training and will be humbled to lay down their life for you, Lord Captain. Clementia is trying to maintain a neutral expression, but you can see her face is beaming with pride. Please command them as you see fit, okay? House Gaprak has sent shuttles carrying sacred technology and manufactured parts that can be used to replace old joints and connections within, within mechanisms. The machine spirits of these devices have been pacified. They are slumbering peacefully as they await your decision on how to employ their capabilities. Lord Captain, news of particular import has come from the House's intelligence network. Lord Inquisitor Calcazar is rumored to be planning a visit to Footfall. A number of Imperial Navy ships were commandeered by Lord Calcazar, and they are also being scrambled to Footfall. Furthermore, we have received reports claiming that secret messages were delivered to the capital worlds of Houses Chorda and Winterscale. Secret messages, huh? It is possible that the Lord Inquisitor's call to arms may smother the conflict that is brewing between the two dynasties. We are seeing an increasing number of skirmishes between their ships and neutral systems. I do not doubt that her ladyship, Corda, will attempt to sway the Lord Inquisitor to her side. Especially since his Lordship Winterscale's luck seems to be running out. Riots have broken out on several of his worlds, and yet he has shown no intention of quelling them. Instead, the rogue trader inflicts brutal punishment upon one of his oldest colonies, Vesuvia Secundus, based on allegations of seditious sentiment. Oddly enough, our agents were unable to find any proof of sedition among the populace there. As soon as we have any updates, you will be the first to know, your lordship. Clementia glances down at her data slate. Lastly, your pet Xenos, your Liette, I believe, is seeking a meeting with you. She has the audacity to defile the rogue trader's palace with her profane presence and refuses to leave until she has spoken with you. I would never presume to be able to read the emotions of Xenos, but the Eldari appeared perturbed. I believe she mentioned a void ship of some sort. It may be best if she told you everything directly. And with that, please allow me and Master Danrock to take our leave. The Chancellor and the High Factotum offer you their, their bows. Perhaps the last request will serve as a welcome distraction? Indeed, your Lordship's stay on Dargonus has been rather long. However, your Protectorate is now enjoying a period of relative stability that for the time being no longer demands your Lordship's personal involvement in its affairs. Glory to the Rogue Trader. Gosh, now get out so I can stop reading. Yeah, man. After these last two episodes, I feel like uh, my voice is a little bit strained. <laughs> that was a lot of reading. Um, pretty cool stuff, though. I actually liked um, interacting with all of the different noble houses and stuff and figuring out more about them. Um, I, feel like <laughs> I feel like some of that stuff is going to come to a head later on in the game, and I'm excited to see where it goes. Um, all I know is that we need to get Sourback's wife to leave him. Somehow. Some way. That was so funny. Okay. Anyways, thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a good one, everybody, and welcome to Chapter 3. I'd like to give a very special shout out to my patron supporters, Darren York, ZTD, Knife Namase, Kyle the Monarch, Chris Murphy, JW, Quinless, Vlado101, Andy Ford, Bruce Wizzle, Black Mamba90, Eureka Gecko, A Happy Fat Panda, Turkeyfoot27, Pato Kuto, Shadow Raven, Hannah Kate the Great, The Blue Electric Cat, Emily Kuzanoa, and Nadia N. If you would also like to join this tier or any others, check out my memberships or my Patreon in the description down below.